dread it, run from it, destiny still arrives. Turns out if you're a science major, you're gonna have to face this ugly boy. And if you're lucky, you'll get out before Big Bro eats your ass. Engineering, biology, chemistry, computer science, economics, even freaking soil science, it doesn't matter. You ain't going nowhere until you sit in the boring, crowded lectures of people who do not give a shit every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and go to small discussion groups that you really don't want to wake up for on a Thursday morning, where that one kid who likes math a little too much just won't shut up. Uh, sorry, got a little too personal there. Anyway, Calculus 1 will suck when you first take it. Trust me, I've taken it two times. And no, I didn't fail it in high school. Although I felt like I did when I took that exam. Oof. I actually got a 4 on the exam, and you need a 3 to pass, so I am comfortably above average. However, my advisor during orientation, who was actually pretty good, gave me the beautiful suggestion to retake Calculus 1 because there was quote-unquote material taught in the course that isn't taught in AP. <clears throat> there wasn't. So yeah, don't sweat it if you've got the credit. Copyright trademark. So, should you take it? If you want to graduate, then yes. If your major doesn't require it, then no. Literally no one has ever taken calculus as an elective. So, what will you learn? Calculus 1, AP Calc AB, Mac 2311, or whatever the hell your school calls it, can be summed up by three major topics. I'll go over them briefly, but obviously you're going to go a little bit more in depth, and if your class doesn't, you should drop out. Side note, if you want to actually learn calc, this video isn't for you. This is just a basic kind of, what am I getting myself into thing? So don't at me, math majors. Limits. They're actually pretty easy to understand, which is nice for once in math. They look like this, first of all, and this one in specific can be reworded as, as x approaches infinity, y reaches what value? So if you look at the graph, you can clearly see that as x increases, y approaches zero. Now note, it doesn't reach zero, it just approaches it. That is the super basic rundown there. In class, you'll learn how to evaluate limits without having to look at the graph, which is, uh, I'd say pretty neat. Derivatives. For the most part, they're just slope. Well, technically the slope of a tangent line at the point, but that's not too important right now. Let me explain. The go-to equation for finding a derivative is this boy, but it can be summed up as bring the exponent out in front and reduce the power. Here are some examples. Notice how if you keep taking the derivative, you'll always end up with zero. Another side note, you can write derivatives a couple ways, one with the fancy looking d over dx, or by simply adding a prime to the y. Either way, it's fine. If you remember that y equals x looks like a straight line and you apply the rule, you get that the derivative is 1, which is the slope here. That's all well and good for lines, but how about the funkier stuff? Let's try x squared. Bring the 2 out in front, reduce the power, and you'll get 2x. Well, that's absurd. A slope can be an equation? Well, yes. Here's x squared. Uh, remembering that slope is rise over run, can you really say that this function has one slope value that is constant? No, you can't. I mean, look at this point, it's clearly positive. But at this point, it's clearly negative. See, for straight lines, they're, they're straight. The slope is constant, so we should always get a single number. But for the other stuff, it should give us an equation for the derivative. Then you just plug in the x value and you'll get your slope. That's it. Well, there's special cases too, like ln of x, e to the x, trig functions, and all that fun stuff. But if you just memorize the rules for those, you'll be fine. Integrals. When you first learn about them, they'll be taught to you as antiderivatives, which besides sounding edgy, is pretty accurate, because it's literally the opposite of a derivative. They look like this, and I have no idea why either. The method for finding the integral of a function is that you increase the power of the exponent and divide the whole thing by the new power. And add c. Remember that we got 2x as the derivative of x squared? Well, let's apply the formula to the derivative. Raise the power, 1 turns into 2, and divide by the new power, 2. And don't forget to add c. Hmm, that looks kind of familiar. You know how derivatives are kind of sort of slope? Yeah, well, integrals are kind of sort of the area underneath the curve. If you evaluate the integral by plugging in two values and subtracting one from the other, in a nutshell, you'll get the area between those two points. It's pretty nifty, but integrals can get really hard to do, especially if you move on to Calc 2. But Calc 1 really doesn't go that crazy into it, so you'll be fine. Just, dear god, don't forget to add C. There are some odds and ends sprinkled in the class too, like implicit differentiation, related rates, linear approximations, and optimization. Which never clicked with me, even after one and a half years, so may the gods have mercy on your soul. But the majority of class is just knowing those three concepts. Doesn't sound that bad, right? It's tolerable. Just takes some getting used to. So, how do you survive? 
Well, this actually differs on whether or not you're taking the class in college. Honestly, the AP class is going to be much harder to survive. When you take it, it'll most likely be your senior year. You know, the year where you will apply to college, wait to be accepted into college, get denied or accepted into college, take the hardest classes in high school, go to prom, be disappointed by prom, be active in clubs, deal with an existential crisis, start a relationship, gain new friends, lose old friends, prepare to lose new friends again after graduation, and just enough room to fit in your calc homework. Just kidding. I was never in a relationship. The goal for surviving AP Calc is to always do your homework. And I know that sounds literally impossible, but once you break the chain, you will start getting terribly lost. And you do not want to be lost in Calc 1 if you are moving on to the later Calcs. You'll be destroyed the first day of Calc 2. So just find the time to do it. It pays off quite well. Also, ask your teacher for help if you ever need it. It's cliche, but it's why they're here. I was lucky and got an amazing teacher. Also an amazing gator wrestler, because Florida. So I didn't have to worry too much about using outside resources. But if you need them, here's a couple I'd recommend. Thankfully, the college class is much easier than the high school class. College is when you start to get a good study schedule that works for you. Calc 1 is nice enough to not be so crazy hard that half the class will fail the first exam. So a definite study schedule isn't 100% necessary, but it helps quite a bit and prepares you for the future. In college, exams are quite literally everything. They're most likely going to be worth at least half your grade. So please don't screw up any of them, because you'll spend the rest of the year recovering from that one grade, which is not fun. And just because homework and quizzes are worth less doesn't mean they're not important. Those points can help you out and lessen the blow of a bad exam. But the hardest part of college, honestly, is getting the willpower to get up and go to class. Once you're an adult, it can be pretty easy to tell yourself, yeah, I can miss that class, but please don't. At the very least, everyday participation is a grade, so why lose it? At the very most, you'll miss a concept that was vital to the course and be lost the whole rest of class. Trust me, it's happened before. Also, I heard office hours are a thing. So yeah, like, use those, I guess. In conclusion, Calculus 1 is a necessary evil. You will absolutely loathe it when you take it. But in retrospect, it is kinda neat. You gotta admit. I don't know about you, but whenever I finish a really long and hard problem, I just sit and admire it. There's really no other satisfaction like it. Especially after that class. Calculus 1 seems elementary. And if you're ever knees deep in a tough problem, just remember that calculus literally means small pebble. Don't let a small pebble beat you.